thanks very much, Greg, and thanks to everybody for turning out. A bit shocked at how much I've aged actually in the years since then, but I've never uh, seen that clip and uh, glad to have it re replayed uh, here. I suppose the first thing I'd like to say is since myself and Mick have got elected to the European Parliament, we actually spent the first day in Strasbourg in wearing our free Julian Assange t shirt. Such is the importance we view. Uh, this case. On Thursday night I spoke at an event in Brussels in a cinema uh, showing off Wikileaks and again of the campaign of international solidarity that is growing in relation to Julian Assange's case and on Friday myself and Mick spoke with John Chipton, uh, Julian's dad, in Dublin about this case and I suppose without going into too much details you don't need to be rocket scientists to that the physical and mental well-being of Julian Assange has been mightily undermined by what he's gone through over the past number of years and by his incarceration now in Belmarsh High Security Prison where he's on lock-up for 22, 23 hours a day with very limited uh, visiting, having spent so many years prior to that in the Ecuadorian uh, Embassy. And I think there's a sad and tragic irony in the situation that for years the mainstream media had us believe that this was a narcissist, a self-obsessed lunatic who was under some sort of delusion that the Americans were after him, but really he was just hiding out for fun in the Ecuadorian embassy. Now, of course, a change of government in Ecuador, an IMF loan that is absolutely causing devastation on the lives of Ecuadorian people, and Julian Assange handed over in return for that loan, and we see that, guess what, he wasn't delusional at all. The Americans do want him. He's been extra attempted extradition under the Espionage Act, where he faces either potentially the death penalty, but certainly the possibility of 175 years in jail. So we are here in solidarity with Julian Assange, but it's not just about the man and his life, even though the man and his life are being undermined. It's about what he represents, because he has been, if you like, the face of our movement in a sense. He is being targeted because he is the face of a movement against war, a movement against imperialism, a movement for truth and for justice. And the work that Julian and WikiLeaks did as part of that struggle did an enormous service to all of us, and we are not going to forget that or give up our efforts in uh, the fight, because that's why he's being treated as he is. There's no other reason other than that. So let's look at why uh, WikiLeaks was so important. And you only have to read the US indictment to realize that. I suppose for many of us of a certain age, the defining global political events of a generation were the US wars in Afghanistan and in Iraq. And of course, we know the pretext for destroying Iraq was a brazen lie. Iraq had no weapons of mass destruction. Millions marched, including many hundreds of thousands of people here on the island of Ireland. The country was destroyed under a military assault, torn apart by the nation building of the United States occupation. Uh, a million children died and people uh, of different backgrounds were forced into conflict with each other. All the time as the assets of the country were being stripped and sold off to US corporations. And what was so important about WikiLeaks in 2010 was that it was such a new and really effective legal way of pushing back against these illegal and immoral wars. Because what Julian did was, if you like, um, introduce against the backdrop, and it's got so much worse since, of a toothless media. Our world would be such a different place if we had a critical, proper, investigative decent um, uh, for the state, but we haven't. But what Julian did really was build a system where people of conscience who want to leave documents and have found a way of introducing and forcing the mainstream uh, newspapers to collaborate on that and do investigative journalism about war and imperialism. And you know the footage in Baghdad that were covered up. We know the 100,000 secret cables that were uh, released from the occupation in Afghanistan. 
400,000 secret documents uh, leaked in relation to the occupation of Iraq, showing the disastrous uh, counterinsurgency strategy of the US military, the extreme debt toll, uh, and of course they exposed the secret order uh, instructing US troops to turn a blind eye to systemic torture in violation of the Geneva Con Convention. And I suppose what they did was that the sharp end of imperialism is of course war, but it's much bigger than that uh, as well, because not only in 2010 did we have the release of the cables about Iraq and Afghanistan, but WikiLeaks then began the cable gate, uh, the wider issues of the release of a million diplomatic messages from US embassies in every country around the globe. And we've had to sit through in the European Parliament, the European Parliament go, oh my God, there's this shocking sort of interference in the elections in Europe and all this kind of thing. And we're saying, lads, the Americans have been interfering in elections since the beginning of time and no one bats an eyelid or even cares. It's kind of considered normal. But obviously the uh, cable uh, showed very much that US diplomats were planning and plotting and still are, of course, how to interfere in the internal politics of other countries, to remove governments they didn't want, to organise coups, to finance wars, and all to defend the interests of big business. They did that but our slavish bending the knee in Ireland by allowing, and to this day still allowing, the US military to transit through Shannon, the territory of a neutral country, on their way to fields of war in uh, the Middle East. But Cablegate exposed US imperialism, and Julian Assange is paying the price for that. He spoke truth to power, but as we've said before, power knows the truth. They're trying to hide it. So what Julian and WikiLeaks did was speak truth to the people and armed the people of the world with information and showed the power of information. The publications galvanised movements, they educated millions of people about what was really happening. They helped to put on public pressure, and I know other people will deal with that. Hundreds of victims got remedies as a result of uh, some of the documents leaked by uh, WikiLeaks. And it is for these, and let's be clear about this, the, you only have to read the indictment. It is for the 2010 publications that Julian is being prosecuted for espionage because he told the truth on these matters. And what's at stake is the criminalization of journalism itself. That's what it's about. It's about destroying hope and it's trying to gag public opinion and journalism, not that most of them are, seem to be pretty happy about gagging themselves, like they're not exactly very brazen to begin with, but should they succeed on this one, it will be a game changer. Now, I'm not going to go into the 18-count indictment, but if you look at it, counts 1 to 17 are all charges under subsection 79 of the Espionage Act, of 1917, and they're about conspiracy to receive national defence information, obtaining national defence information, disclosure of non of uh, national defence information, and this disclosure is being willfully communicated to pe people, persons not entitled to receive them, and the persons not entitled to receive them are the citizens of the world for whom the truth is being covered up. That's who they don't want educated about what is uh, going on. And each of the charges in the indictment aims to criminalise either receiving classified information or publishing it. And, you know, those are the things that security journalists are supposed to do. I mean, we cannot overstate how serious and dangerous this situation is because previously only a source could be prosecuted for leaking information. So we all know ethical press persons then move might and main in order to protect their sources. And if you read the indictment, all of it is about Julian's dealings with Chelsea Manning, whereas it's quite obvious what's going on with the computer programs, with the packages that they used and so on, that this was designed to protect Chelsea Manning's identity and to get the information out. And these are being called computer crimes, conspiracies and so on. That's what's been done here. Simply using the internet as a journalist now could be criminalised if this indictment goes ahead. So there's a huge amount at stake for everybody, obviously for Julian as a person, his life is most definitely at stake. It's probably already fatally damaged, let's be honest about it, but his actual life itself is under threat. But journalism as a whole 
is under threat as well. So the point I really want to make, and the reason why we're here, and the reason why we're campaigning on this, and we're trying to organise a big event in the European Parliament around this issue, is that it isn't a foregone conclusion. Because extradition is a political decision, ultimately. It's a, the decision of the US Department of Justice to use the Espionage Act shows that this is a political prosecution. And extradition can be stopped because of that. We know in the past extraditions have been fought and they have been won. In the case of Gary McKinnon, where at the 11th of hour, in the most unlikely of places, Theresa May stopped that extradition taking place. And I don't think it was because Theresa May is a great woman or anything uh, like that. I think it was the public pressure put on that forced that. At the same time, the extradition battle of Laurie Love, again, was also won as a result of a strong uh, coordinated campaign. So there are those who say that, you know, oh, you can't do anything about this. Why bother get involved in anything? Why try and change it? But everybody can do something. And we want to appeal to anybody who's coming to this meeting, anybody who's watching this wherever it's been streamed, to speak out on this case, wherever you are, to send a card to Julian in Belmarsh and let him know that people are thinking of him. The extradition case will begin for real in February. We want to build a people's movement, a genuine transnational global campaign of solidarity that defends genuine journalism and defends someone who is a hero of the movement against war and the movement against imperialism. So I'm really, in conclusion, urging you all to come on board that battle. We'll redouble our efforts and we hope that everybody else does because there's a hell of a lot at stake here. We do know as well that Chris Williamson, another victim of the battles uh, against war and imperialism, is also here and Chris can speak up for himself but we are also, because we have to leave to go, we can't stay, but I want to put on the public record my admiration for Chris and the struggle that he's also involved in. Thank you.